Hey kid, you wanna, you wanna see something cool? Come here. Yes, another mechanical keyboard. My collection is growing. But this is not just another keyboard review for a filler video. I didn't want to make a boring keyboard review. So to make it fun, I'll be showing you guys the real process that goes into making my 2D videos. Not the jokey ones that I made a few years back. That was just for fun. This time, I'm going to show you the real process. I've been using this method since I first started this channel. Nothing has changed because I don't like change. But isn't this a creative way to show off this beautiful kawaii bunny keyboard from Dust Silver? You know, one of my favorite keyboard brands to own and to work with. We like a healthy sponsor creator relationship. So remember the last D84 keyboard I reviewed from Dust Silver? You know their Cyberpunk Pro? This is the exact same model but with this kawaii bunny design. It comes in this cute pink box with the kawaii bunny design. Kawaii. Holding on to Dust Silver's popular keyboard. It's kind of like their mascot, I guess. So right when you open it up, you can already see the beautiful colors. I should let you enjoy some ASMR unboxing. Nice. Look at that. I love this color palette so much. I want to use this for my sticker club designs. Now, I'm not so sure about the theme of this kawaii bunny. Because from a distance, it reminds me of those chewy candy wrappers, right? This space bar especially. But up close, I'm having a hard time making out the theme. Like, is it a skater theme? Either way, it's really cute. The space bar reminds me of those candy wrappers that I used to eat as a child. I also love the font of the keycaps and these cute symbols at the side. The color palette is gorgeous. Blue, pink, white will always be a nice combo but then add some lemon green and lilac and you get this masterpiece then on the back you have three levels flat level one level two up here you have the receiver and you can see that just like the previous keyboard it offers three modes of connection bluetooth usb and wi-fi and of course the cherry on top it's rgb backlit these rgb lights will be the death of me it has 21 different color effects and it looks so beautiful is my camera doing it justice so like the other keyboard you can remove the sidebars for aesthetics now this kit with kawaii bunny stickers you have a manual pink usb to usb c cable keycap puller and this signal receiver normally they would ask me what switches i prefer but this time the keyboard came with red switches this keyboard is hot swappable so i can change the switches if i want to but then these actually sound good my previous one had blue switches they're very clickety clack clack these have a softer sound Okay, so now for my 2D video making process. First things first, write the script. I don't have a list of video ideas, I just decide to make my videos based on how I'm feeling at the moment. In the past, I did have an alternating schedule. Like after a BL video, I'll put out a story time video, and then after that story time video, I'll put out a BL video. But then now, I just go with whatever I feel like talking about. Like for this script that I'm currently writing, my types of aromanticism script, it's going to require research and stuff, which is a part of my writing process. So I'll write and do my research at the same time. I just wanted me to make one on aromanticism. Is that, is that even a word? On types of aromantic identities? On types of aromantic. I always write my scripts in the way that I speak, you know, my everyday speaking tone. I also write full scripts because as a Malaysian, a lot of times my Malaysian English will sneak its way in if I don't have a script. And you know, Malaysian English, we have suffixes like la, kan. You won't be able to understand me. Next, recording the audio. I use this microphone that I got for my desk makeover video. You can watch that video to know what brand. Actually, I prefer standing to record my audio, but I don't have the proper setup. So I just place my microphone over this. And yeah, I used to have a pop filter, but I think this microphone comes with a built-in one. Also, I use Adobe Audition to record. Way back in the past, I used to use Audacity. But then add some lemon green and lilac, and you get this masterpiece. Wait, lilac and lavender. What's the difference? Lilac, okay. Lavender? <gasps> it's the same. Lilac versus lavender? Is lavender the same as lilac? Oh, lilac la. Yeah, la lilac la. Hey, lilac or lavender. I don't know. Purple la. I just see purple la. <laughs> Where are you? Ah, where was I?
Sometimes I'll repeat a few lines if I feel like I didn't say them right. And now I'll always leave a few seconds of silence to use as sample to remove the noise. Once I'm done recording the entire thing, I save it first. I've had experiences where I edited without saving the original, it crashed, and I had to record all over again. Nice. So the few steps that I do to edit my audio, first select the few seconds of silence, then go to effects, noise reduction, capture noise print, or shift plus P, then select the entire audio, control A, go to effects, noise reduction, then head on to effects again, amplitude and compression, normalize. I put 93.6 to bring the gain of the audio to like the same level. I'm not good with audio lingo since I'm self-taught, so sorry for making any audio geeks cringe. I only learned how to edit audio for this one bit of my video making process. After that, I head on to amplitude and compression again. This time, I choose dynamics processing. These are my settings. I've been using this since the dawn of time. This is also to make the audio consistent, like the volume consistent. And that's it. This is where I end my audio editing. So so once I'm done with that, the next step is dividing my audio into parts. This helps me plan better. So I'll remove some bloopers, errors, any awkward pauses, and I'll separate them as sentences. So I do this for the entirety of the video, and I'll have this like audio 1 to 99, sometimes 202. I know it's a lot of work, but I am a very particular person. I need things to be in order. I'll go crazy if they're all over the place. Now's the time to plan. So instead of storyboarding, I actually story list. Now my list can be very messy, don't be shocked. I warned you. So what I do is, I listen to audio 1, then I'll write number 1, pick a word from audio 1's sentence, then I'll put arrows underneath on the assets that I'll need to prepare to illustrate this sentence. So I use Adobe Illustrator to prepare my assets since I'm a vector art graphic designer. All the vectors from my vector library, the ones that I've made, the ones that I've bought, can only be used in Adobe Illustrator. So when I head on to Adobe Illustrator, I create a 1920 by 1080 canvas and export as PNG one by one, saving them under scene 1. Then I'll take these assets off my list once I'm done exporting them. So I'll prepare all my assets on this one layer because you can make use of all this space in Adobe Illustrator. And if I need a couch, if I need a TV, a car, I can just choose them from my vector library. Or I'll open up a past video file and reuse them or make them myself if I have time if it's something that's not in my library. So that's how I prepare my assets. Some of the movement is also prepared here because animation is not my major and it's not my focus. My goal is just to get my message out there, not to make smooth animations. So it's all simple, frame by frame stuff or tweening stuff. After this, I'll head on to Adobe Anime. I'll create a new 1920 by 1080 scene, save it as scene 1, import that audio 1 to my library, place the exported PNG assets according to the audio, And then I'll head on to File, export the movie as JPEG. If there's a part where I'm just talking, I'll import a pose from my library of poses that I created years back. I have all my expressions, all the head positions, hand positions. This is why even right now, I'm actually planning to upgrade my avatar because I'm sick of using the same one for years. It's about time, right? But then it's going to be a lot of work to prepare them all over again like this. So what I'll do is I'll choose one pose or expression, then manually lip sync based on the mouth position that I prepared separately. There's a feature in Adobe and animate where you can very easily lip sync. But my computer will lag, so I actually do it old school style. I have a neutral and smiling mouth positions. The ones that I have are based on the mouth positions that you use when you speak. So I'll place one mouth position on the stage and press F8 to create a graphic symbol. Then I'll place the audio inside of this symbol and do my lip syncing. This way I can resize it or reposition it all together.
this is why I call my dust silver keyboard as my lip syncing keyboards because I need these function keys for my lip syncing. My F5, my F6, F7, F8, the fuller keyboards are too big. Some of the smaller ones, they don't have the function keys. It's a good thing that this one does. Of course, if I really want to, I can customize the keys of the other keyboards to do the same function as these keys, but that's a lot of work. After this, I'll head on to Adobe Premiere Pro, create a new project and import the exported JPEGs. Import the edited audio. Actually, I can't skip the Adobe Animate section and do it all in Premiere Pro, but my computer tends to lag if I do that, which is why I get stuff done in Animate and use Premiere Pro as my final step to put all the scenes together, all the audio parts together. So the creating assets and animating is done together. I'll divide this list into 10 parts. So I'll prepare 10 assets, say on Monday, and I'll edit them in Premiere Pro the next day, Tuesday. Then I'll create another 10 assets from my list on Wednesday, and I'll edit them in Premiere Pro or lip sync those exact assets on Thursday. I'll do this all the way until the video is finished. So when I'm done syncing the audio, the JPEGs of the scene, I'll scratch it out just to keep myself updated. Once that's done, I'll add the intro, outro, add some sound effects or background music. Maybe that's a bit where I'm thinking, so I have to edit the audio in Premiere Pro using any of the effects to add reverb to my voice. Or maybe there's a flashback, so I'll use Premiere Pro's color features to make it look faded or desaturated. So once all of that is done, I'll export the video using the highest settings, render at maximum depth, and export. Then I'll create the thumbnail in either Photoshop or Illustrator, and boom! You get your notification of a new upload, and I'll end up sleeping for like the entire day. No, like I have my after upload sleep, a very nice deep sleep that I'll take as soon as I press that upload button. And it's so nice to wake up after knowing that a 2D video has been uploaded, to have no assets on my list to prepare or no lip syncing to do. And then after that, I'll start the process all over again. So yay! Did you see how I used this beautiful kawaii keyboard throughout my process? Please say you did. I'm trying to make this video as creative as possible. And also now you know why any keyboard with the function keys will automatically become my lip syncing keyboard. So personally, I don't have much to say about this model since it's the same as the Cyberpunk Pro. So a lot of the positives that I said for that keyboard applies to this. The only difference in my experience using this keyboard is related to the different switches. I actually like the red switches. I'm sure you were also able to hear the softer sounds of the keycaps as I typed. The keycaps for this don't have a raised design or like a tactile design because the Cyberpunk Pro one, they did have a certain tactile design that you can feel at touch. So if you like this kawaii bunny, maybe you weren't a fan of the other designs or you want your collection to grow, you can use my discount code JELLY to get 12% off. How amazing is that? So just head on to their website, add to cart and put in my code JELLY to get 12% off. You're welcome. Thank you so much to Dust Silver for sponsoring this video. They are one of my favorite sponsors to work with, I highly recommend you to check out their other keyboards. I saw that they have their K84 keyboard released in these beautiful colors. Hope you found this video informative, especially if you're looking to make this kind of story time videos, if it's even still a thing. And I'll see you when I see you. Now that I look at my video making process, that's a lot of work. I hope you think about this the next time y'all ask me for a 2D video. I also hope this video can help some of you out there if you want to start a storytime channel. I had to learn everything on my own. How to lip sync, how to edit audio, how to create certain effects in Premiere Pro, and everything I had to learn separately. Different tutorials from different people. So hopefully this video will be useful to someone out there. Also, I am a very particular person who doesn't like change, which is why my method is very old school and very thorough. If you can find a way to simplify some of the stuff that I did, go ahead. Or if you're an animation kind of person, there are better programs where you can rig your characters instead of doing frame by frame like me. This is just the way I make my videos, based on how comfortable I am. 